Hey there, quick update. Just want to let you know that 3D Builder is indeed still being actively developed by Microsoft because they just released a new update which gives us a great new feature. So one of my main complaints with both Unity as well as uh, Paint 3D and 3D Builder is a fairly limited selection of so-called primitives. And that is their very basic shapes which you use as basically building blocks for other shapes. What they've added now is this here. See custom? So if you click on this button, what you get is the choice of the predetermined shape that we've already looked at, cube, sphere, cone, torus, and cylinder. But then once you've selected the shape, as you can see it defaults to cube, we now have additional options, latitude, longitude, width, height, roundness. So width and height is just scale. You could have already done that on your own, but this gives you more precision control or more precise control. To the best of my knowledge, what latitude and longitude is doing, if you look at the surface, you'll see more facings. So to the best of my knowledge, this is increasing the fidelity because I tried to experiment. I used the default orb and I put a reflective material on it, and it really looked terrible once you put the reflective material on it because it showed you that there really weren't that many facings. So if you do this, you've got a slider. You see it increases. So I haven't been able to find any documentation on it, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on, that basically it's increasing the fidelity. I'll do more testing and get back to you so we will know for certain. But if that's the case, that is really great because you had no way of controlling that. So if you had a very lightweight application, you want to reduce the fidelity because you don't want it to take up a lot of uh, processing power, you didn't have the ability. You just had this default amount of facings. Now you can go in there and change it, which also allows you to do something else. And that is you could use the uh, same core model for, say, in-game graphics and higher resolution uh, animation or still images. And you would come back, what you do is you'd come back into your project file here, just change the facings. So you change the long, in this case, the latitude and longitude. So width and height, that's just scaling. So let's just change this to like 30. You've got it, you, you know, you could already do that on your own. So that's just equal to scaling. But like I said, latitude and longitude, to the best of my knowledge, this is actually increasing the amount of facings, which will increase the detail. It'll make it a much smoother surface. Or if you don't need it to be so, so smooth, you can reduce it. So let's cancel that, go back in. Because this is the one that I, I really care about, the roundness. Because up to this point, you've always had to like shave off the corners or something like that if you didn't want it to be a perfect square. Now, with roundness, you have a scale. It's one, two, three, four, five. So you could just type the number in there if you want. So it starts at zero. So you could type in one. You can see, now I have this roundish corner. Two, three, four. So effectively what's happening is the curve, it's coming further into each side. So the, the, the curve is coming more towards the top, curve is going more towards the bottom, more towards the side, more of the uh, corners are, are, are consumed by the curve. And then the highest one is five. So maybe you didn't want something that was uh, perfectly square or rectangular or angular, I should say. You want something more roundish, like maybe a briefcase or something like that. Something that is vaguely square rectangle, but has like softer, rounder corners to it. You can now do that. So this is huge. And then you can mix and match this with the tools as far as like splicing, making hollow and things like that. So let's just click on add. So not bad at all. Kind of looks like a marshmallow too, actually. Great. So let's see what else we've got. We'll go back in there, custom. 
So that was cube, sphere. Again, this is the one I mentioned where you could really see the difference um, for uh, how smooth it is. So let's just click add. And you can really see that that is not smooth at all. But maybe that's the look you want. Maybe you're doing like a disco ball or something. And so you kind of want to see the individual panes. But what if you don't? What if you want it to be much greater fidelity? So let's go to 77. I just randomly grabbed a number. There you go. And so now we'll click add to that. So see what I mean about the fidelity? It definitely is much, much smoother now. They didn't give us that control before. Now we have that control. I don't think there's anything else to that one, but let's take a quick look. Just radius, so that's scale. You could do that on your own. Or I should say you could do that previously. So cube, sphere, cone. Again, you can see rather than being really smooth, you now have uh, the more flat edges. So maybe, again, you want this look. Maybe you'd want something that's a little more angular, like maybe it's meant to be like a tent, or maybe it's meant to be like a drill bit that you want more, uh, le you want less facings, that you want to be less roundish and more angular. But again, with the latitude and longitude, you can again make it nice and smooth. I have to be honest, I haven't found out what Division does yet, and I believe this is the only shape that has it, because Division wasn't on Cube, Division wasn't on Sphere, and you have a whole range. I don't see any difference, so I'm not sure what Division does. If anyone knows, feel free to put in the comments. Unsurprisingly, the documentation online says nothing about it. Um, radius and height. Technically this is a new ability. You could, I don't think you could really effectively do it. You really kind of had to combine a couple tools, but what this does, so radius will make the bottom wider. Okay, so now you have a really flat cone. It doesn't even really look like a cone now. So technically you could do this before, but you had to combine a few different tools. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, yeah, this is effectively new functionality. But if you change both radius and height, effectively it's just a scale. Whoops, sorry, I really didn't mean to have it be 90 and 40. I just wanted it to be 90. So, okay, great. And we'll just click add. You can see pretty smooth. So that gives us additional functionality now, or at least simplified functionality, the fact that you can now make it effectively um, a, a much wider cone rather than having this. Let's just quickly go to what it was before. See, this is what it was before. If you wanted to scale it, you could grab, say, one side and then the other. So that's why I'm saying that, yeah, you could do it before. But sometimes having a lot of things that you could do before but be simplified, it saves you a lot of time in the, in the long run. All right, so custom. So sphere, cone, so torus. So we have latitude, longitude, radius, and inner radius. Now this is great because one of the things I didn't like about the default torus is it was really bulky. It was like a donut or a bagel. Well, what if you wanted a ring? Like, you know, like Sonic or something like that. So let's change this. So the inner radius is smaller, therefore making it bigger. So now it has that kind of donut or bagel look. But well, if we go up to say like 25, now this gives you an interesting prospect because this could almost be something uh, like maybe you're doing like some kind of fine mechanical parts and it's like a seal or something like that. And actually it was in red, so I don't think it likes that size. But you can see that you do have a range. And you would have more of a range if we changed the latitude and, and longitude again. So let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, so now it'll, it'll have 
the ability to break this into smaller subdivisions. So let's go back up to like 15. See, now that really looks like a ring. It doesn't look, uh, it was a little bit angular and it was kind of breaking it because we didn't have the ability to divide it into enough. So now we can. So this is a good example where longitude and, and latitude make a huge difference because you're able to have much more minute control. So again, maybe you're trying to do um, like a ring for Sonic the Hedgehog, something like that, or uh, plenty of other uh, uh, options. Like maybe you're trying to make a basket and the basket is made out of like individual circles or weaves like that. All right, so latitude, longitude, radius, that's just gonna make it bigger. But as you can see, one is affecting the other. So because the inner radius is the same, inherently it made it thicker by changing the outer radius. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind that you've got that relationship between the two. Okay, so I think that's it for Taurus. Let's just take a look to see how it looks. Again, looks really decent. So effectively, it's a shape that we didn't have before because before, that's what we had. We had the defaulted donut or tire tube or whatever you want to call it. Now you can have a much thinner, more elegant ring. For jewelry, air rings, whatever. Okay, so I think we only have one more. So let's delete that. Custom cube see they stop at cylinder here this doesn't scroll so i don't know if they're eventually going to add the other shapes so that leaves cylinder again you can see this is more angular that might be the what you're looking for uh if not latitude longitude now you have a small cylinder uh, a smooth cylinder again division so this one also has division if I can find any information, I will, but I haven't found anything online yet about what division does. Uh, radius and height. So again, this is basically scaling. So radius will make it bigger um, along the X and Z planes, presuming that Y is vertical. So let's make this, so it says 20, let's make it 30. See, so you're just scaling it in two directions. Again, you technically could do that before. You just kind of had to do it manually uh, one direction and then the other, or one axis and then the other. And then the height is just the vertical, which you that you could definitely do before. Okay, so again, I'm not sure why they didn't keep on and do the other shapes. I'd be embarrassed if I'm missing something really obvious here, but it looks like it stops at cylinder. So they've got cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, and torus. So they skipped tetrahedron. Although, as you saw with the cone, if you reduce it, you basically, if you reduce the longitude and latitude, you basically make a tetrahedron. Uh, not so much, or a pyramid actually, similar in size. So you probably could technically make both of those by reducing um, the uh, lati latitude and longitude. So maybe that's why they didn't do it, don't know. Uh, but then for that matter, they didn't do wedge and they didn't do a hexagon either. But very excited that they gave us this custom tool, particularly because with Taurus, basically, like I said before, it was a one size fits all. It was a donut, it was a tire tube, it was a bagel. It really didn't have that range that you needed. And, and so to me, that's a huge gain. Likewise, being able to make the rounded corners on the cube. So it's good to know that they're still working on this. I'll let you know if I find anything else, but I just want to do a quick update with that. Okay, I hope this has helped.